are we going to provide process isolation? Right? We want to ensure that one process can't read or write the memory for many other processes. So for instance, process two here can't read or write outside of its bounds. Um, there are software solutions, right? The software solutions, if you have some sort of an interpreter or something like that, then you can prevent uh, access outside. So basically, if you're checking all pointers. Alternatively, uh, if you have sort of some sort of uh, uh, tagged data where there you don't basically just don't have raw pointers, uh, then that's then that's one way to deal with it. Again, requires usually some interpreter to go along with it. But for hardware, what we want to do is something like we saw with the relocation register. We're going to add one more register. So we've got a process. Again, let's say it is process two. And its size, well, we actually know its size here, right? We know it went from B to C, so its size is actually C minus B. And uh, so we'll still have the relocation register. And that relocation register for process two will still have the value of B and we will still add that getting the physical address. So that's still going to go into this locate this starting at B. So we're going to take a logical address we are going to feed it in the relocation register or add it to the relocation register. But first, what we're going to do is look at the limit register. And the limit register basically says, we know that uh, it can't be below zero, but we also impose an upper bound on it. So we know the lower bound is zero. The upper bound should be C minus B. And we'll have some sort of A check. So we're checking whether it's less than. So the logical address comes in here. If it's less than C minus B, then we feed it long here. And if it's no, then we're going to figure out something else to do. All right. So while process two is executing, these are the values of the registers. And therefore, any addresses that are within the range 0 to C minus B will get B added to them, right? So if they're in the range 0 to C minus B, then we add B, we get from the range B to C, which is exactly what we want here. However, if we're greater than or equal to C minus B, then we don't want to go out to memory, right? We don't want to allow process, the, the CPU that's running right now to be able to um, uh, go out C and above in physical addresses. So we need to do something which is cause an exception. Okay, so we could get, just like we could get a divide by zero exception, we could get out of limit exception, for example. And this provides us the address space isolation that we desire. So what happens if the kernel, well, so let's look what happens if we go into the kernel. So how is it we run the kernel code, right? We do something that gets us into the kernel mode. Let's even back up a second. It's probably pretty important that these registers be protected. That is, that process two can't modify them. Because otherwise, process two could just say, I'll set the relocation register to zero, the limit register to two to the 32, uh, two to the 32, what, minus one, and then it'd have access to all of memory. So these are protected registers that cannot be accessed in user mode. But let's say we cause something to go into kernel mode, a system call, uh, a, an interrupt, something like that. We go into the operating system. What would it want to change these registers to? 
while we're in the operating system? Well, it would want the relocation register to be zero because it wants to be able to access all this area. And the limit register could be A, but more likely it'll probably just make the limit register wide open, right, 2 to the 32 minus 1. So it has access to all this memory because it may want to read or write any memory from any process, right? It may need to be copying parameters, uh, putting return results, stuff like that. So it would want to do that. And then let's say it switches from process 2 to process uh, 5. So let's say this is uh, E here. So if this is process 5, then as process 5 comes in, it will go ahead and, this is the operating system I'm talking about, part of what it will do as part of this context switch is it will restore the registers. So two of the registers that will be restored are the limit and relocation registers for process 5. What were those limit and relocation registers? Well, the limit register was E minus C. And the relocation register was C. So now process 5, again, has logical addresses from 0 to E minus C. And they get converted to physical addresses from C to E. That's how hardware can help in providing process isolation.